let's look at the scaling phase. So when we look at the, uh, this from the aspect of the startup development phases, we have covered now the formation, validation, uh, formation and validation. And just as on the previous uh, modules, basically when you are entering into a growth phase, a scaling phase, it basically means that uh, that you you are free to forget and not worry majority of the things from the past uh, activities, but you still have, of course, all of the things that you produced and all of the learnings that you gain on how to do validation. Uh, you have the mission, vision, strategy, all the outputs out of these uh, previous uh, phases as your tools when you're entering to the, to the growth phase. But basically what it means when you enter in a new phase that you need to find a new mindset, you need to kind of uh, design a new behavior uh, for the organization and focus on new aspects uh, than in the previous modules. So of course scaling is all about taking your validated uh, product and validated uh, business model your validated team to real markets and start to expand on that and really uh, grow that from uh, different aspects instead of just continuing to to uh, validate the product. Of course, at the same time, you are expanding the product, adding new features or creating new ver future versions <coughs> or even uh, com um, uh, complementary products and so forth. But all of that should happen only in, in in context or around or in addition to something that is already validated, uh, like the, the minimum viable product of, or, of market uh, working product in, in, a, in a minimum way. So basically here in, in, in scaling phase is all about building, starting to build the organization uh, versus just the, the, the business side or the product side. So in the formation phase, we'll focus a lot on the initial team and the, the, the market and the customer. And on the validation, we are focusing clearly to match the market and the customer with a real product or offering. And then on the growth, we'll focus on taking that to market and basically it gets back to building the, the team into an organization and running that organization as well. So why do we use these uh, development phases? It really helps to bring uh, um, guided focus. So instead of uh, having multiple balls in the air, which you still will have, but at least you know whether you should have red color balls in your hands or blue color balls in your hand and not all the different colors and everything in the air at the same time. It helps you to uh, give you some general milestones. It helps you to give some uh, progress measure. And it really helps you to get more um, uh, logic into the order of things, uh, how you need to build something out of nothing. And it also helps to, to those who um, have experienced or have built the companies before to give it, give a framework and a tool for all the trainers, mentors, advisors to, to also communicate different things and also the benefits or pros and cons of doing different things at, at different phases. Um, because basically uh, a right advice uh, given or deployed at the wrong development phase can actually become a wrong advice. So uh, it's important to, to understand what type of activities and what type of things are most relevant in, in these different development phases. And it also means that if there isn't the foundational things in place, if there are un the, the types of things that need to be in, in in place before entering or before thinking of growing the business, it basically means that it's trying to grow without uh, realistically having the ability to grow, which in, in, in is, is a path to failure. 
So of course, if you try to do something without the necessary tools or skills, it's very unlikely that you will actually succeed. So of course, if you don't even know what those tools are, or if you don't know what that ability requires, then it's very hard to even put those things in place and then you would be uh, potentially failing without even knowing why. So when we look at this uh, through these development phases and just looking all of the different aspects uh, that can be done and we compare that with the failure factor of um, premature scaling, it basically leads to, to things that, that if knowing all the types of things that need to happen in a successful venture uh, and then trying to just get and skip a lot of steps along the way, it basically means that the risk keeps getting higher and higher the more steps you skip and the more it may mean that you have to actually come back to the, the starting point or start pedaling back or taking multiple steps back to go and fix those before you will have the ability to grow. So it may lead that the, the things will move much slower in the beginning, but at the end of the day, there is much more uh, ability to grow. So this is the, the really the perspective into, into this development phases and the use of it. <clears throat> so when we look at um, building a startup, um, it's, it's very much um, overlooked how much effort actually goes into building the whole, the whole thing. Uh, maturity of, of new entrepreneurs and maturity of the support functions also basically focus and the knowledge that are shared there basically focus uh, on the product and the market side and the customer side and, and so forth. But uh, very little is focus and kind of understanding of how much effort and how much support would actually be also needed in the side of building the actual team and building an actual organization and building the actual company that runs that product or service uh, in the markets. So that's the, I, I, that's the less sexy part, that's the, the less visible part. It's much, of, much more boring side to maturity of, of innovators, uh, but at the same time, in fact, that is the, the reason why also many um, companies fail because with good team and good organization you can always uh, re-innovate and you can pivot and you can keep changing the products uh, along the way but it's much harder than the other way around that if you're only trying new business ideas and every time you're trying to build the team and the organization behind that that it's much slower process and if you don't learn that that is a factor for the success then, then uh, even with the successful product or service, you may end up failing the business. When we look at the startup development in the context of uh, support functions and through these steps, um, it's key that in the beginning to focus on, on acquiring the necessary knowledge as a as a founder and a founder team, what is going to be needed in the, in the developing the whole startup from all the different aspects. And when getting now into the scaling phase, it becomes much more important to then look at all the resources, money, additional team members, connections, partners, channels, and many other aspects, because now it's really taking that um, that product and service to the markets through different channels and, and means. <clears throat> At the same time, in the earlier phases, typically there's a lot of public services and public funding, grant funding, support activities, mentoring. Majority of those are free uh, or very affordable. Uh, also, you are even from the private side, you are getting a lot of free tools, uh, channels, or pay per cost type of solutions to be able to do a maturity of the beginning part pretty much for, for free or at very low cost if you exclude the, the, the cost of uh, team members which should be there 
because of the equity not to be paid with salary initially. Uh, and, and then on the scaling phase, it becomes much more private service providers, investors, bigger companies, those who are already more in the markets uh, to partner with them or leveraging the different industry channels and different industry connections and forums and places uh, and networks uh, to really scale the business. So this becomes very much then also uh, focused into the business vertical or business function that you are looking to take to the market and uh, uh, in industry related uh, opportunities. So <clears throat> if we just look at the, the word scaling, what does it mean? It's, it's basically, uh, here's a good kind of short description. Scaling uh, is about a system whose performance improves once it acquires resources in a proportion to the, uh, to the capacity added. So basically, it is a system, it is an it is engine of sort. And that if just more resources are added, it should be able to, to produce more. So now you have to think of that, that if you just put, if you think about your company at the present state, and you would just add more money to your bank account, uh, how would that money be used? Do you have a fixed system that you put money here, you put $10 there and $15 comes out on the other end? What is that process in between that you know that that's how it works? If you put more people uh, sitting in your office, is it clear how they would actually, what would they start to do, what they would start to execute, what existing uh, models or processes that would automatically start to, uh, to that they could produce more uh, value to the market or more results. So the scaling phase is all about uh, coming up and, and understanding of how to, to create these things and how to consider these aspects. So when in the ideation formation phases and on the validation phase, it's all about flexibility. It's all about using business model canvas. It's all about doing MVPs, being very outside. And the reason for that flexibility is to really be able to test many things because uh, basically it means that majority of things are not validated. You don't know what works. So you have to have a very flexible model, efficient, flexible model to test as many things as possible. But once you get and start to find what works, now it's all about uh, becoming boring in a certain sense and start re really repeating those things that work. So basically, if we think about managing the operations with very hands-on involvement, uh, founders will eventually limit their own growth. At the same time, if one would distance themselves from, from the, the hands-on involvement, but don't have any means of running that engine, then of course that wouldn't help to grow either. So just giving responsibility to others doesn't automatically make it grow. So that means that uh, if a company is going to scale, the management, uh, basically the founders or whoever is at the management at this point need to implement standardized and repeatable process with the proper delegation. <clears throat> so it's a combination of, <clears throat> of uh, procedures, tactics, processes, models, and attached measures for those who understand the, the business, who have basically built the business to be able to, uh, to see that the engine is running correctly. So, so all of the learnings need to be put in a format that others can also execute them, perhaps improve them, but in a way where those who are managing and running the company can also understand from the measures how the company is being run.
So basically it means like uh, getting from this very hands-on feeling, you have the gut feeling here, you have the engine in the back, it's pushing you uh, forward, uh, and, and you have understood the basic of why uh, uh, any, any flying device can, can, can fly and you can feel all the different movements through your body, very hands-on experience. You, you, when you pull or push that or you move it side to side and you feel the weight underneath and you feel the wind in your face, this is very manual operations, but you know when you understand the basics and you apply them and you fly with this kind of device, you, you feel and know and see how, how it is flying and why it is flying and where it is flying and so forth. <clears throat> but when you think of the, the bigger company, it becomes a very different thing. So you have very limited view uh, what's ahead and uh, you have to be able to fly through different weathers. You have to be able to fly in context of other, other planes. So you need radar systems. Uh, you really don't have so much of a gut feeling whether the, the, it's, it's flying or not. Uh, you probably have seen some of the, the flight investigation uh, uh, where, where they examine why some accidents happen with flights and, and in certain situations the, the pilots felt that the, uh, it was actually flying if the meters were giving wrong signals but it actually was dropping um, so basically to run your business you have to learn to run it through uh, the measures the meters the kpis and you have to trust that the processes what happens between each of the movement that they actually happen also externally. So now you have all the different things in between, but you still, it's, you're still flying and you are still making those movements, but you are now doing it with very different type of uh, uh, approach. So it basically means, means that to getting from here to there, is what you need to build for your company. <clears throat> and then if we think about the supporting ecosystem in context, is of course that there are, there are uh, those who are helping you to, to, to land to a new market. There are those who are helping you to exit, to go uh, to different markets. There are those who help you to refuel. There are those who help you to, to, to get rest and, and get prepared and there are even those who can help you to run your company if you if you build the, the the management team and everything step by step and at the same time when you enter into the different market you could all, always ex, uh, assume and expect that in most market there are support organizations there are ecosystems that can help you uh, to land and do business also in, in another market so from this analogy, hopefully this gives some, some ideas and, and perspective into how you should really think about your, your company and your business um, in the context of, of markets as well. So before uh, taking a deeper dive, let's uh, do a checkpoint here of the types of things that, that you should already have um, prepared from the previous development phases, uh, whether with the help of, of, of uh, the, the materials we have or in general how you have arrived here with your business. So uh, before you go into the scaling phase, um, you should have a very clear um, company mission, a clear vision where, um, so a clear mission, what value are you providing and to who? a clear vision where the company is heading, where, where the company should be envisioned in uh, 10 years time, a strategy, a general strategy framework, a very top level strategy framework, how you are navigating um, in, in that mission towards that vision. And you should have a set of uh, guiding principles uh, and values for, for how the company should be run, like what type of people, what the company should represent, 
what it can do, what it can't do, uh, what it should do, what it shouldn't do, and so forth. And you should have a updated roadmap. Uh, where are you now to today in your roadmap from the beginning or previous stages? Uh, in what milestones you, milestone you have achieved now that is justifying you to move uh, to the next phase? And what are the updated milestones? Review your milestones and what those are uh, towards the vision. You should have a clearly validated team, a team that can execute. Uh, to, to really be ready to go to the scaling phase, um, at least in an in a ability that they have full commitment, uh, they have uh, the types of uh, uh, skills and attitudes required, and they, they can also help to carry the company culture and values forward when they take on more people that they work with when they are scaling their own activities and delegating their own activities to, to new team members. Um, there should be already market validated product or service, the whole offering for the customers. So basically those uh, that your mission is focused on. And you should have initial business model in place or at least chosen. Uh, so that depends on on when, what is your kind of um, resourcing plan and what is your vision and, uh, and ambition because it may be that you will only focus on the, uh, the, the more uh, detailed business, uh, business model later on. So if you are more bootstrapping, you should already have a clear business model in place. Uh, if you are more on the investor path and there is a clear traction and, uh, and, and, and you would decide uh, to choose the strategy of going with investors and figuring out the business model later on and just focusing on market, market share and market presence uh, while scaling. Uh, that's, that's a strategy as well. So the business model is, is dependent on also the chosen growth strategy. And uh, you should have the basic KPIs in place and KPIs for what are going to be used, identified. And we are going to start focusing more on those uh, in this module. And really, if you don't have these different aspects in place, do not start to grow. Uh, don't go into growth mode, even if there would be a good market demand. Um, just try to, to accelerate on getting all the things in place that you are still missing before going to that scaling phase. Uh, it's not going to get any easier to do the foundational things and the things that you are currently missing later on when you scale with the business. Uh, that's, that is exactly what the premature scaling is is to, to moving with the aspect, even if the market is there. If you, if, if you start to acquire more business than what you can handle, it starts to backfire in the way of not being able to support, not being able to deliver, uh, starts to lead into your reputation and so forth. So don't expect that you can just somehow magically fix the things later on if you have not been able to get them done by now. Um, so, so that is an aspect to, to really, really consider. As a, <clears throat> as a mentor and advisor, I, 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 I oftentimes saw too many of these cases that whether they had a bad situation or they had an extremely good situation from business or financial perspective, uh, they still were struggling to grow. Uh, simply because they, they had skipped those steps and they basically didn't have the ability to grow them. And some of them even didn't know what can, they can do to fix these things later. And the reality is that some of these things are very difficult to fix later on. For example, if you have uh, poorly distributed the ownership and there isn't a, a good shareholder agreement in place and you get uh, founder issues, uh, or you don't have alignment, um, you are missing core team members, you have too much of an ownership for other people to care about your business growth and at the same time 
you are losing your own strength or maybe you're getting sick or whatnot, it's very hard to find someone to, to, to balance that growth. Um, or you are just simply missing all of the, all of the things that we are looking to go through in this, this module to cover what you should prepare for the, for the scaling phase. And basically you're running the comp, you are, you are flying that big plane or, or bigger plane with the same type of gut feeling, trying to run around the plane and to adjust the wings and everything on manually. So you can get the analogy that it's, it's not going to be fun and it's not going to really work and the, the risk of failure is very high, regardless of how much money you would be making, because the money automatically doesn't convert into people knowing what to do and, and, uh, and, and finding people to care and so forth. And after this module, you should have uh, really the, the growth focused key performance indicators, the KPIs validated so that you know that the meters that you are looking are actually right meters for your business and you actually know that they are connected uh, to real processes and real business activities. You should have <clears throat> initial growth strategies chosen and in use. So you should have a base set of, of uh, strategies related to growth and scaling in place. Of course, all of these should be documented and you should uh, periodically look at those and keep updating them based on the learnings of, of you and different, uh, different team members and the whole organization. <clears throat> you should have clearly the operative work where, you, where the things are being executed, where the strategies are being executed and put in place, separated and in good balance with the actual strategy work where new ideas and, and and new tactics are put in place uh, because of the market changes, the competition situation changes, the ambition levels change uh, with the new learnings and whatnot to make changes on how things are operated. Um, but those should have a clear separation and balance in place. You should have growing financial resources, so you should have, because of the validation that there is real demand on the market. Hopefully there's market pull. So the market is really uh, pulling. This depends on the market timing as well, or you are still pushing, but you clearly see that the market is emerging and growing. Uh, because of that, you should have growing financial resources. So having more and more um, financials, either from investors or from revenues or or other opportunities to, to lend money uh, and so forth to do more of what you know if putting those financial resources in uh, applying to those you know they will actually bring you even more financial resources to, to scale the business. You should have defined and have key business processes in place and improving so basically you should have those in place and documented and in use and basically uh, being improved uh, along the way as the processes are operated. And because of all of this, you should also have accelerating growth. So basically uh, with the growth ambition and the scalability in the business model and the constant improving of different things, you should be able to to, to keep accelerating your growth as long as you have positioned that in, the, in a big or a growing market and you clearly have a competing, competitive new value producing innovation that you are pushing to the markets. So now let's go through the really key principles and, and this, this cannot be highlighted enough uh, so, so we'll go through this really to, with, the, with the business logic. So <clears throat> the whole point of scaling is that you are able to come up with repeatable, uh, repeatable models that work, that are known to work. And because of that, those can be teached 
and document it to others to execute and to improve. So basically, this very much means that it's not a random process, but a very systematic one. If you're doing random all the time, that let's try this, let's try that, let's, or, or you do random, you know, on the fly sales uh, pitch to different customer every time because you are very creative in the sales situation, you are good at reading people, but you don't know how to, how, what works to specific type of customers and you don't have that documented, then basically the only way to scale would be to have similar talented people who are very creative at sales and, and, and always finds a way to do that. But at the end, at the same time, they end up selling a product that you can't deliver. Uh, so, so that's not a model how you can you can build. So it's not a random, but a systematic process, a systematic way, and in somewhat the execution actually can be uh, what I call very boring at, at the same time. But the, the passion and inspiration should come from the company mission and vision and not from the processes uh, itself. The processes are there to execute the mission uh, towards the vision. Um, if you don't understand what you're working with at the moment or if you don't understand what you are doing, why it works or why it doesn't work, it's very hard to develop. So basically you need to understand uh, how the basics work and why do they work to be able to then also start giving good ideas and feedback of how those can be developed. Uh, and it's a good way that you may get, as a, if you are new to the team, it's very common that you come up with many new ideas or clearly see some things from the external perspective that how things could be done better. And that's a great start record, document all of those ideas, but then learn to understand uh, why the current things are in place and why certain things are being done the way they are, and then cross-match your own findings <clears throat> in context of those uh, to see whether those ideas are actually uh, something to, to test. And then, if so, uh, start doing those or start testing go with the other team members and, and go through those and, and prioritize them, how those should be put in place and see what the results would be. But don't just start changing things without first understanding why the current things are in place in the way they are put in place. Because typically there is real rationale behind there, or hopefully there should be real rationale behind there and real documented uh, learnings. Of course, the markets and many things have may, may change and most likely have changed that require new approaches. Uh, so it's totally common also that these things need to be developed. But it's clear to be able to have a balance with understanding before developing. And then uh, finally related to when you are improving things, when you are actually developing things, whether that's a process, whether that's a product, whether that's a, a customer profile, whatever that may be, uh, if it can't be measured, it is. It basically can't be measured if it was improved. So therefore, if it can't be measured, it can't be improved because you don't know what better it is. So that means that there should be a starting measure and then there should be a, a measure after something was changed to see whether it improved or actually made things worse. And if there is no measures in place, it basically means that now if you are flying that big plane and you just put more, uh, more power to it, uh, what happens? So does it just go faster? Is it climbing or is it, is it uh, not climbing? or is it actually going sideways? What's happening? So you have to have these measures to see um, what happens when you make changes. <clears throat> and even now, when we are coming out of the validation phase, where we were focused on, on specifically to creating the product and doing the validation, 
the validation is still a very relevant concept and, and the speed of iteration and validation cycle is key also at growth phase but it doesn't apply to everything all the time so now it becomes more that those things that are known to work you have many things that you need to build when you're on the scaling phase so basically it means that how quickly you can test and iterate and validate new processes or changes to the processes uh, changes to the cha advertising channels changes to the sales materials changes to uh, brochure changes to the website whatever that is um, the, the faster you can uh, iterate validate and improve it's still uh, a very important concept but at the same time you have to separate what you are building and then the, the new elements or the change elements and the balance between making decisions on change and improvement versus running with what is, is, uh, is already working.